So I'm super excited to present the new content onboarding here. How can we help you, our customers, to get your content into PIM as easy as fast as possible? So a bit of a background. Today we have several ways of doing this. We have the REST API, we have the remoting API, we have the portal Excel import, to import both in, uh, data, and, and data and media. We have the import adapter. What content, on content onboarding brings to the table here, and first let me mention that the previous list here, they will all remain, so rest assured. What content onboarding brings to the table here, that is product centric. So it allows you to import product trees, product hierarchies, that, that is combination of, of entities and links. So there's no more custom development required to link your entities together on an import. So onboarding now becomes much more easier and standardized. So today you will see Philip here acting as our onboarding specialist for Survivor Filter. He will be assigned an import task through the assignment list of InRiver, which is part of the new workflow. He will map and validate this data file from the new ERP that Rui just mentioned. He will do this using an onboarding workspace that, will help him, that, that is built by InRiver Labs which in turn uses the import API that is part of content onboarding. So a lot of, a lot of uh, terms there. The, the onboarding workspace uses uh, smart algorithms and AI to assist the user in his work. And that's what we'll see in the demo today. And last but not least, the source data file that we'll import consists of both data that belongs to the product and the item, but all the, the, the user will do is a field-by-field -field mapping. So let's, feel, let's get to work here. So we're stopping, we'll start in the top right corner here, which is the uh, new assignment list. Again, this is something that you will see throughout the demo. Philip will go back here all the time to check if there's any work to do. We can see here that it's an activity to import the data. So let's press this activity here. <coughs> so now we'll be taken to the onboarding workspace. So what we'll do here is we'll upload this data file that contains both data and items, but this could just as well be executed by, by files la landing into a landing area or files execute or the API executed through an iPass. So we press, uh, we press import. So here comes the mapping step. So we can see here that the files to the right that is called target, that is the model fields. And to the left is the, uh, is the fields from the file. Uh, and it's already done the mapping for us together with smart, al smart algorithms. So if we go down here to the color, for instance, we can see here that the color in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the model is called color with a U.S. spelling, but the color in the file is, is spelled color with a, with a non-U.S. spelling. It still makes that connection for us. If you go further down to the approval field, we can see here it didn't make the link for us, so we can go in here. We need to go in now and make the link manually. And if we look at here, and we can search in the list there, Philip, and we go to approvals, and we can see here there is two fields. It, it, didn't, it didn't know which field to pick. So let's pick this manually. And then now when we go and do the second pick, we'll see that it's only one field left of it. So it kind of, it, it, it keeps track of what field has been mapped and not, so there's no conflict in this step here. If we would go and press confirm now, it will remember this choice. We don't have to go through this step again the next time. But for the sake of the demo now, just uh, clear these choices. So let's press confirm. So now we're taking it to the validation step. Now we do a direct upload of one file. So the validation step happens directly on the screen. If this would be a, a scenario where we're working with multiple files, this would be a separate step that would be handled separately. We can see here that it's six errors, and we see some of them on screen, but not the other ones. We can filter this in the top, so we get a more con consolidated view of what needs to be addressed. So let's have a look at the color field, for instance. We can see here that it's a CVL, and it says none, but it couldn't make the connection for us. Similarly, if we look at the, we look at the product approval field, we say that no, and it's probably Boolean, but it's actually CVL, but it's, it should be probably be false and true, but it says no and yes. So we can try to fix all by applying AI and the magic wand up there in, in, the, in the top, so press that one. So everything looks green and good here, but just to be sure, let's go and have a look. So we can see the no color here, or the none became no color. This seems like a good option. We can also see the product approval became false and true. That is okay. If we look on the, on the, the category level two, we can see camp and hike became camp and hiking. So that's also a good option. 
But if you look at the num level number three here, we can see batteries. If you hover over that one, we can see that it was water. So probably something we need to adjust. So in here, we can go directly into this feed and apply AI directly on specifically this field here. So battery powered water filter, that sounds like the product that Rui just mentioned. So let's press save here. And we can also do this on the sec on the row number seven, but let's, let's, uh, let's skip this row. We need to do some further analysis and we press confirm. So now we see the summary view. No nothing has been imported yet. This is a summary view of the changes that has been applied to this file. We can see the, 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 the multicolor pie there to the left, which is basically the fields that were suggested and fixed. So let's press onboard now. And now we're actually sending this file to the import API that runs in the background. We can go to the top right corner and we can see the history of the job here. And we see the first one running. So let's press that one here. So here we can see that the, the uh, records processed is actually the, the, a file that was supposed to be 100. It's now 99. Remember, we skipped that one row. But we can also see entities that's out of 100 rows, actually 156 entities are created. So it makes these links for us to create both, uh, both products and item entities and linking them together for us. And he here we see that it completed. If there would have been errors, we could have seen that here as well. But let's press close. And I think the import uh, job has now been done. But just to be sure, let's go back where we started to the assignment list to see if there's any more we need to do here. So import has been done. No more work to do. So thanks for, uh, thanks for the work, Philip. So what we just witnessed here was the onboarding workspace doing the field map, the mapping and validation for us, then sending the data to the import API. This was done for a customer with a multi-level model, but not a single line of code written. So looking further into the future, and we'll, but this is what really excites me here and what we'll see here as well, is we will spend the time on this here is further kind of eval or evolving the solution, doing a lot of work on the landing area, area that we see to the left. So this is where the, you as a customer can upload multiple raw data files. The mapping that you just saw today, that has already been done for the files. You will send them up. This could be hundreds, thousands of rows, millions of rows. You upload it to the landing area, and they're being processed in the background. And all you get it back is a ticket number, basically, per file, and you can track the progress running in the background. Looking beyond this year, we will evolve it even further. So here we see the staging area in the bottom. Here's where we start to work with data. So in the landing area, we worked with files. In the staging area, where we work with data. Here's where we'll continue to evolve, adding functionality as uh, multiple file orchestration, to handling multiple file and sequences as they come in. We will have dedupe and merge functionality with products that gets data from multiple sources. We will also, this is also what enables the replacement of the supplier onboarding and the contribute, which I know that a lot of you customers are interested in. Here's also where we can start adding AI functionality. And so I think here's where we see a lot of partners in the future doing the work, applying AI, applying, applying additional functionality that you can do on the data before it actually comes in the PIM. And speaking of that, the PIM validation step that we see here, the validation that you saw today, that was done on the file itself. That's more from the person so, uh, providing the file. Uh, the PIM admin here is where we can approve the data before it actually comes into the PIM to make sure that only proper data comes in. So three things that I would like you to remember going into this or taking away from this session here is skip the customer integra integrations, content onboarding handles the transformation for you, cutting down both the setup cost and the operational cost as well. Speed up your data imports. So with the help of the in-river landing area, which is in-river hosted, and the file acceptance and getting the ticket back together with the validation, um, the speed that you will spend doing the data imports will lessen significantly. And in-river provides you with a comprehensive data quality tool here and with the staging area for you to make sure that only proper data comes into your PIM. So thank you very much.